it was just six months ago that I sat here discussing the initial release and rollout of Grin's rear all-axle hub motor. And I'm happy to say that at the start of 2024, we're ready to roll out some major enhancements to this product family. So starting off with the rear motors. On my left, I've got the original rear all-axle motor, and here I've got the new version 3 update design. They look pretty similar, but the most prominent difference lies in the cassette free hub. In our original release, we couldn't get a torque sensor integrated into the free hub driver because none of the torque sensing free hubs could fit over the large diameter axle that was needed for through axle support. So we did the best we could, which was include a 12 pole magnet encoder that enabled us to at least have basic pass functionality built in the motor. But if you wanted a conversion system that measured and responded to your pedal torque, you still had to purchase and install a separate bottom bracket torque sensor. Well, needless to say, this problem has been solved with our version 3 release, as we've now got a torque sensor built right into the free hub body. Now, in this example, you're looking at a Shimano HG road compatible free hub. It's a little bit longer than the mountain free hub that we've had to date. That allows us to support not only mountain bike cassettes, but also road bike cassettes, which are just about two millimeters longer. If you're using a mountain bike cassette, we provide just a small spacer behind to make it fully compatible with those two. And this is just one of three free hub drivers that we provide. So we've also got a higher end option that features a SRAM XD driver for the free hub cassettes. Now those SRAM XD cassettes are very popular with one by drivetrains featuring a super wide range from the smallest to the biggest gear. The biggest benefit for e-bikes is that that small gear goes all the way down to 10 teeth. And that can make a huge difference in your ability to pedal a fast e-bike while still maintaining a comfortable pedal cadence speed. Now, for those of you who don't care for torque sensing in your e-bike system and don't want to pay for that, we continue to offer a Shimano Freehub model that has just a basic pedal cadence sensor without the torque sensing at a lower cost. So flipping these motors around to the other side, there's a subtle difference that you'll notice between the torque arm interface and the axle. In our original motor release, we had two lobes that locked the torque arm against rotation. And in testing, this resisted about 180 newton meters of torque before failure, which is enough of a margin for this size of motor. In our version three update, we've added four additional splines that more than doubled the torque at which this could handle before shearing. Now we didn't strictly need to do that for this size of motor, but it became essential when we wanted to add and support what was coming next. And that, my friends, is a fat bike motor. This motor has a 45 millimeter wide stator, 45 millimeter wide magnets, making it over 50% more powerful and more torquey than the original motor standard based on 27 millimeter magnets. This wider motor fits easily inside fat bike dropout standards, and it'll allow us to support 170, 190 millimeter quick release and through axle rear fat bike conversions and give the entire fat e-bike community the benefit and thrill of riding a Grin motor on the back. There are other direct drive motors compatible with fat bikes out there, but they tend to weigh between nine to 11 kilograms. When you compare that to Grin's all axle version at 6.0 kilos, it's barely heavier than your standard geared motor of similar power capability. This fat bike release is in development stage right now, and we expect it to be fully available sometime in late spring of 2024. So our original rear all-axle motor supported the three most common dropout sizes for mountain bikes. That was your classic 135 millimeter quick release dropout, the original 142 by 12 through axle dropouts, and the more modern 148 by 12 boost size through axle. In our version three series, we've added a special axle extender that allows us to entertain some less common but still important dropout standards too. That includes 145 millimeter dropouts commonly used in tandem bicycles. It includes the 157 by 12 super boost through axle standard. And it also includes the super wide 160 and 167 millimeter standard used by Santana Tandem on their tandem bicycles. When you add the fat bike that supports 170 quick release, 177 through axle, 190 quick release, and 197 through axle, that in total gives us 11 different dropout types that can be accommodated with Grin's version three rear motor standard. Since we released the version two update to our all axle motor back in 2019, we've had phenomenal feedback from thousands of customers all over the world. And it's proven to be a very reliable and robust hub motor with one exception. 
there's been one recurring reason why these motors come back to Grin for service and repair, and that's because customers end up damaging and severing the electrical wire right where it exits the axle. And the reason for this is that in an effort to support both a 20 millimeter through axle and have the cable exit on the same side of the disc rotor, the entire cable has to exit through a very narrow area. Now with the disc rotors and disc bolts that Grin provides, there's just enough clearance that this cable is protected. But if people use other brands of disc rotors, or if they use an M5 screw with a larger head or a washer under the screw, there's always a chance that that washer or disc rotor can rub against the cable guard and eventually wear right through and wear through the cable sheathing and eventually short out the wires. This problem kept happening again and again, and we kind of realized that the only way we could really solve this was to drop support for 20 millimeter spindles. At this point, the 20 millimeter through axle is a long ago deprecated standard in the mountain bike world as everything is running 15 and 12 millimeters. So in order to solve that problem, the version three all axle front motor has a 16 millimeter and not a 20 millimeter diameter native bore. That gives us more room for the cable to exit with sufficient margin away from the spinning disc rotor and the disc screw heads. And that should once and for all put that problem to rest. It does mean that this motor is not compatible with 20 millimeter forks anymore, um, but we will continue to produce the version two motors in limited quantities for those that do require a retroactive 20 millimeter axle. Because the bore diameter is smaller, that does mean the version three motor end caps and inserts are all slightly different in geometry and we separately sell them on our website from the version two inserts. We've also, as we did with the rear motor, machined an axle extender that makes it a bit cleaner when you wanted to support the front motors on wider dropouts. The axle extender simply fits over the spline torque arm side and moves the torque arm further out. And then you can use the same inserts and end caps that you would for a normal quick release or through axle bike, but with a wider fork as you have for fat bikes. There's one final difference to both the front and the rear motors, and that's that we've changed the thermistor inside the motor from a 3900 beta constant to a 3450 beta constant. I mention this only because if you are upgrading a system from a version two to a version three all axle motor, but using the same controller or cycle analyst, you wanna make sure to change your controller or cycle analyst thermistor parameters to reflect this new value. So as you can see, things have come an awfully long way since we first started this endeavor of making our own hub motor here at Grin. 12 years ago, we had no CNC equipment and we're using some manual milling machines in our garage with a rotary table to see just how light could we modify a Chinese hub motor and whether or not we could make it compatible with the then new through axle bike standard. We're now at a point where we're mass producing from our facilities here in Vancouver, one of the best all around motors on the market. It's lightweight, powerful, with a great torque density, has integrated torque sensing, it's waterproof, stator aid compatible, works with modern 32 hole rims, and supports every single dropout standard of both front and rear forks that exist on the market right now. What more could we possibly look for in a hub motor? At this point, with the version three release, I think I've nailed everything I ever wanted. And I thank all of our customers who've helped support Grin over these years to see this vision come to fruition.